So, from your interest in Eastern philosophy, you somehow made a bridge to an interest in comedy and performance. How did that? Uh, I think it was a, the other way around that I, that my interest in comedy uh, sort of led me into uh, philosophy and looking for the uh, the real jesters in, in the philosophical world. Led me to Mahayana Buddhism. Led me to the Taoists. Sufis, possibly. Sufis, of course, yes. And and I think there's a lot of Western artists and philosophers who are crazy wisdom masters. Of course, Nietzsche and uh, the Dadaists. Uh, Hieronymus Bosch. Hieronymus Bosch. Mark Twain. You know, Mark Twain's uh, dark writings, so-called dark writings, are wonderful sort of uh, deconstruction, a humorous deconstruction of Christianity and Western thought. And I remember he wrote a short novel on the subject of the courtly fart. Uh. Yes, yes. <laughs> he was a classic. But, and, and I think he was sort of the Western Chuang Tzu. Chuang Tzu is very much like Mark Twain. Chuang Tzu said, he who knows he is a fool is not the biggest fool. And that's sort of the, the crazy wisdom outlook is that uh, we, we really take ourselves very seriously. And uh, Maybe there's no reason to take ourselves seriously. We should think about it. Well, this sounds a little like the classical cartoon, the guy coming to Mr. Natural and saying, what does it all mean, Mr. Natural? Right, and right. he says... It don't mean doo-doo. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> That's a... There are some crazy wisdom masters, though, who, who uh, sort of transcend that view and... and they have a they have a more benign uh, feeling about the human condition, but there are those who, uh, uh, coming out of the crazy wisdom school, you might say, although they they would all deny they're in a school, who who think that life is is pretty much meaningless and uh, it's a, the jokes on us. I mean, here we are, born into a life we didn't ask for, not told why we are here, what we're supposed to be doing, and given just enough awareness to know that we exist and that we're going to die. And it's like Wavy Gravy says, if you don't have a sense of humor, it's just not funny. <laughs> yes, well, didn't somebody say life is a joke without a punchline and death is a punchline without a joke? <laughs> <laughs> Franz Kafka, you know, said, once said, uh, the meaning of life is that it stops. Yes, it's great. Did you see here in Prague that one of the main streets has a banner with Kafka's name across it because they're doing some theater production? And I thought to myself, if that isn't Kafka, yes, <laughs> uh, what is? So we've been talking about your interest in Mahayana. I know your main uh, interest is comedy and humor. As the author of Crazy Wisdom, can you put those two things together for us? Yeah, it's a, it's sort of like a cosmic perspective and a comic perspective are one and the same if you get the right angle on uh, the human condition, you know. And uh, there are many great uh, fools and jesters who have also been mystics and uh, have really had the overview of overviews and yet make a lot of jokes and make light of it. It's sort of the, the lighter side of enlightenment, you might say. So you mean the great madmen of Western history, uh, Hieronymus Bosch, uh, Dolly, Ensor... Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Groucho Marx. I mean, <laughs> you name it, there's, there, there's a million of them. And they're both Western and Eastern, and they, they both... Uh, all the crazy wisdom masters uh, seem to say that you know this this life is a is an enigma, and if it's not an enigma, what is it? You know. Uh, so if you can't understand it, at least you can laugh at it. Yes, trying to laugh through the tears. I mean, that's been the, the ancient uh, Jewish Jewish way through their, all their oppression. And uh, being a Jew, born and raised in Nebraska, life has always been a little strange for me. You know. I've always felt a little like an alien. I was going to say, an extra environmental for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm talking with Scoop Nisker, the author of Crazy Wisdom.
Well, now, your uh, your métier tends toward performance, is that right? Actually, partially performance. Not a lot of people get my uh, jokes. Uh, it's mostly transpersonal people that get my jokes. So I do workshops uh, mostly in Crazy Wisdom, sometimes with Paul Krasner, the editor of The Realist. Mm -hmm. We have workshop participants make up their own religions and uh, their own governments and then present some kind of ritual that would... would uh, give the facets of that government or religion. So basically it sounds like the premise of crazy wisdom is irreverence and uh, breaking down of boundaries surrounding sacred cows and institutions. Absolutely and, and saying that you know we really don't know and we have to look at all of our stories and see them all as, as only possibilities and, and that nobody's got the, the answer. Um, and also that, uh, uh, you know, we think so much of ourselves, we take ourselves so seriously, and we think we know what's going on, but every century or so, and every new civilization, we find out that the previous one was wrong. And so to recognize, as Chuang Tzu says, that uh, they who know they are fools are not the biggest fools, you know? So would you be willing to sign on to the idea that the world is not only stranger than we suppose, it's stranger than we can suppose? Yes, yes. I sign on to that. Good. Well, listen, uh, can we have a hit of your sure. Hochkunst here? Let me step away and you just uh, do your thing. That's your bag. That's my bag. Well, I'll sing a little song of introduction. I wear crystal, I think kind of mystical. I like brown rice and green tea. I got myself a mantra, I've tried a little tantra. Meditation sets me free. You can tell by the things I do. I'm a middle class Jew. It's, uh, it's been great being here in Prague, where they've had this velvet revolution. It just, it's so soft so soft and, and beautiful to look at and they have this president that we in America can only like dream of Václav Havel you know a philosopher a poet a conscious compassionate man uh, George Bush was formerly in the oil business and the president we had before that was a b-grade movie actor so they had a velvet revolution here we're still waiting for our revolution in the United States the polyester revolution. When the, when the Soviet Empire collapsed, I said to myself, aha, one empire down, one to go. And it won't be long. It seems like, it seems like the United States' decline and fall is well underway. Uh, there's really nothing to be ashamed of. Empires all collapse. No empire can live forever. A couple decades ago, the British were proud to say, looking over their vast empire, the sun never sets on the British Empire. And uh, now it's just those few little islands in the North Atlantic. They might say, the sun never rises on the British Empire. So that's, uh, it's the fate of all empires. And uh, ours is on, on the decline, real steep these days. You know, the biggest national debt in history, the biggest trade deficit in history. The Japanese make better cars and TV sets than we do. The French make better bottled water than we do. God knows the Czechoslovakians make better beer than we do. I think what we should do is see the writing on the wall and go to the United Nations and announce that we are resigning formally as a superpower and from now on we'd like to be known as an ordinary nation and just save everybody the trouble of decline and fall. That would really, it would, be, it would set an example for all empires to follow. I think it, it's really a good idea. And. Uh, there's a candidate for president who could lead us in this decline and fall, make it easy for us. Uh, my friend here, nobody. Nobody uh, will lower your taxes, nobody will feed the poor, and nobody can fix the economy because nobody's minding the store. And uh, nobody has all the answers. Nobody can stop the wars. When nobody wins, nobody loses because nobody is keeping score. Uh, and nobody is gonna do it for you, and nobody will treat you fair. 
Because nobody knows the trouble you've seen. And nobody cares. And one more thing, no, nobody is perfect. And nobody will live forever. And nobody's gonna save you. Nobody knows what's going on. And nobody is the one and only one. Uh, well, one more thing, nobody loves you. Oh, uh, and nobody could be so divine. And nobody can fool all the people all the time. Well, uh, the Transpersonal Conference, that's what we're here in Prague for. And uh, really what it's all about is uh, breaking out of your personal trance. Transpersonal is breaking out of your personal trance and into the cosmic dance. And you do this by breathing hard and fast and hyperventilating or by taking psilocybin mushrooms and having a vision or by uh, taking a hero's journey or a shaman's journey or taking a course in miracles, developing your imagination, your mythic imagination, your intuition, uh, getting in touch with your heart chakra, your right hemisphere of your brain until you can see the implicate order and you can smell the morphic resonance and you can feel yourself dissolve into the, the ultimate hologram of the universal ground of being and learn to love it all as you do yourself. That's transpersonal and it's breaking out of your personal trance and into the cosmic dance. Because really, you know, we are all one. I'm one anyway, I think you're probably one too. And uh, you know, those, those people who achieve oneness can then move on to two-ness. Something like that. Uh, anyway, we are all made of the same stuff. As you can see, you know, there's grass here and uh, trees. And, and if you go inside of those, that grass and trees, you'll find uh, subatomic particles that are the same as the subatomic particles inside of me. What else is there to say? I mean, we are all one. And, you know, you can have this cosmic perspective. Uh, you know, the Big Bang and everything expanding away from everything else and uh, it all eventually coming back again into this one little particle that it all came out of. And you can have the great perspective of the Buddha sits there with his little smile watching empires rise and fall and individuals rise and fall and even universes rise and fall. Everything born and transforming into something else and nothing remains as it is. And the Buddha knows this and yet he's got this little smile on his face, sort of a little smaller than that of Alfred E. Newman's, who once said, what, me worry? The Buddha is sort of like that, but a little bit smaller of a smile. But no matter how big a cosmic perspective you are, or you've got, sometimes you get the blues, because everybody gets the blues, and life is tough. You know, it's just, it's just that way. Uh, you know, uh, the Hasidic rabbis used to say, if God lived on earth, people would break out all his windows. So uh, I'd like to close maybe here with a little song called The Buddha Blues. Woke up this morning, there was trouble in my mind. I tried some meditation, but no peace could I find. Called up my guru, I asked him what to do. He said, son, you just gotta remember that first noble truth. You were born to suffer. You were born to pay your dues. And that path keeps getting longer when you got the Buddha blue. Well, money will bring your problems and love will make you cry. Sometimes it seems like life is just a bitch and then you die. Buddha says desire will get you from being free. And I'm craving for this and I'm craving for that and it just won't let me be. Go leave me to suffer. Go leave me to pay some due. And that path goes on forever when you've got the Buddha blue. Christian people believe you go to heaven or you go to hell. The Jews believe the Messiah's yet to come, gonna judge this life so well. Some people believe it don't mean nothing in the end. But the Buddha done told me I'm gonna come back and do it again and again and again. Be reborn and suffer. Be 
keep on the pace you do. And that path keeps getting longer when you got the Buddha blue.